Hey guys, welcome back to your Hopium Filtered content. Today we're looking at the biggest mistake new investors make when investing in cryptocurrencies. I'm talking about the altcoin versus Bitcoin chart and not realizing the amount of risk they are taking on by investing in altcoins at the wrong time. So if you are scared, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, bell notification icon, like the video up, let's dive in. Now I want to be inclusive here, so if you're also fearless about the process, you can also like the video up as well. So now that everyone's included in liking the video, let's have a look at what we're talking about here. And I've mentioned it many times on the channel, and I know from experience this is probably the biggest thing that people uh, don't understand because it's a very different way of looking at the markets, especially when it comes to having to compare uh, what we're investing in against altcoins and also Bitcoin because we want to reduce our risk, so our downside risk, how much we are putting on the table and how much we could lose, potentially lose from that pot. I know that's important to everyone because most people are here for the money, not necessarily for the technology or what it stands for. So looking at this video a couple of weeks ago, uh, how altcoins lose value, Bitcoin bleeds, there's plenty of stuff here uh, that I'm talking about altcoins falling, but Bitcoin rising and I want to reduce that risk. So I've looked at this on uh, in Instagram as well. You guys have followed me over there and I do daily Q&A. So if you're not already following, make sure you do that and you can ask me questions over there. So I'm explaining it over there on a regular basis as well. Altcoins losing value in Bitcoin value, but also rising in their dollar value. The riskiest thing is to be putting our money into those when Bitcoin's going up because Bitcoin is the least riskiest in this massively risky asset class of cryptocurrency. So let's have a look at the market caps that we're currently sitting at and the prices. Ethereum around 2200, Bitcoin around 34,000, Cardano, one of our favorites, $1.34. If you're interested in staking your Cardano, check out the video I have down below. You can stake with the Investor Accelerator Pool uh, and earn yourself passive income with your Cardano. The market cap, 1.4 trillion. So we're still pretty stable. So we're looking at it in this bull market, but we're currently in a downtrend, all right? So we need to understand the pricing at the moment. And I'm gonna be using the reference points, as, reference points uh, for all of these charts to be the exact same thing. And then I'll show you how this is so impactful onto your uh, portfolio and how you just wanna absolutely remove these cryptocurrencies from the portfolio, from your portfolio, if you see this pattern playing out. So I'm going to use ETH and Bitcoin. We're going to use the biggest cryptocurrencies here. This is the US dollar pairings, all right? And I'm using particular tops and closing prices to give the example of how this plays out. And I've used June here, June of 2017. So as you can see here, we've got Ethereum at a high of about $414 and Bitcoin's high was around 2,980. I specifically use this point because this is the top on Ethereum BTC. So this is the, the highest price it has ever been and we haven't seen that price before. Uh, we haven't seen it again, I should say. And also at this point in June, that's four years ago. So this is like four years of a loss if we are holding, uh, or if we bought in at that top and continue to hold, all right? Pay really close attention to that. This is four years now. So I'm using a monthly chart and uh, just looking at the top at that point because as we know, most people will buy the top or close to the top and uh, they tend to sell out near the bottoms because people get freaked out. We're looking at June, four years on, which is a nice time frame that we looked at. We're now end of June. So I'm using the data on the close of June, 2021. And we can see that ETH has risen about 450%. So this is taken from the top $414. The close, today is the 1st of July, 2021. You can apply this to any market, I should say, as well. It doesn't matter what time frame this is, uh, like what period in time this is. If you're watching this six months from now, two years from now, it doesn't matter. Just use the same analysis on your cryptocurrencies and it works. This is just how the numbers work out. So the close is 450% or the close is 220. Uh, two so the closing price is 2,276. So I've given it a little bit, a few bucks here. You can see this blue on the side. I've put the measure up to 2,300. That gives us 450%. Now, if I had bought Bitcoin at that same time, this is the top in June, $2,980. I would be up 1,080%, all 
If you want, call it a thousand, call it eleven hundred, whatever. But it's been more than double because we've got the closing price here of thirty-five thousand dollars, and from that point in June of 2017 to the close of June 2021, four years, I have been able to double my fiat. So I've doubled my money just buying Bitcoin at that top instead of buying Ethereum at that top. Now, I'm not saying this is going to occur forever, but it's looking at a chart in this way, looking and assessing your altcoins in this way that's going to lead you to bigger gains. So this is just looking at it in terms of buying the top. Had I bought the bottom, very different story. So this is why we need to wait for the altcoins to bleed. And I'll show you this now on the BTC pair of ETH and ETH USD. All right. So June, again, let's use exact same numbers, uh, exact same time periods. June 2017, June 2021, end price. Here we go. It was $414 when we bought. So the top June 2017 and the current price at the close of June 2021, June 30th, 2021, 2,276 gives us about 450%. We just looked at that. Now, on our Bitcoin value, we're looking at it from the top. So the same time periods, the top was 0.156. So about 15.6% of a Bitcoin. That was the value then in June 2017. The current value in Bitcoin is 0.065, just for round numbers. So about 6.5% of Bitcoin's value. So we've actually lost nearly 60% of our Bitcoin value. So just to make it easy to understand, if I had thrown in one Bitcoin, and remember in 2017, One Bitcoin was $3,000, $2,980. So I throw $3,000 into Ethereum. I would now have a lot less. I'd have 60% less. So one Bitcoin's worth. I'd now only be able to get about 0.4 of a Bitcoin instead of having my full one Bitcoin. So I hope you're starting to understand how these numbers are so important when we're comparing the, uh, the, the fiat pairing of the altcoin that we want against the Bitcoin value of the same altcoin. Now, what we want to do to win is purchase our altcoins when they're at their bottom of their cycle, not on the way down or not at their tops, obviously. So remember, we always want to buy low and sell high, and that, that applies to the altcoins as well. And so if I use our measuring tool again and say we bought some of these bottoms on Ethereum, the US dollar pair, so around, say, about $200 up to our current closing price of 2,276. So that's about as close as we're going to get there. There's about $1,000. So I've chosen April here at around the uh, uh, around the closing price, which is 206. So April, let's have a look at April as well on in 2020. Closing price is about 0.024. So get that as close as we can. And then to the closing price up of June 2021, which is 0.065. So let's get that close as we can, probably about there. So about 160%. So that's what we want to see because we've seen the the US dollar value increase. That's a given. You know, Bitcoin's gone up. But now we're seeing Ethereum outpace Bitcoin. And so we've doubled and a bit, you know, 160% on our Bitcoin value as well. So if we had invested one Bitcoin's worth in April 2020, we would now have two and a half times our Bitcoin. That's what we want to see when we are investing in altcoins. We don't want to see them bleed out uh, and but see the, the fiat value of that altcoin remain the same. We want to see both increase. We want to see the fiat dollar, the fiat pairing of the altcoin go up and we want to see the altcoin against the Bitcoin value also go up. So I just want to emphasize one last time before I show you some examples of altcoins which have not gone anywhere near getting to their all-time highs of their Bitcoin value. I just want to really emphasize the point here that we could see these altcoins really skyrocket in their dollar value. And if I put this on log, you'll really see uh, the difference here on this chart, Ethereum US dollar. That was a very solid price, $400. It came from about $7.00 up to about $400. So it's a very strong move against its fiat value. But because it's moved so heavily, then we start to see the Bitcoin value fade 
as it's pushed up so hard. And then Bitcoin moves again. And that's what happened in the second half of 2017. So this is 2017 and Bitcoin continued to move up. Whereas Ethereum, even though it was moving up in its dollar value, you can see it bleeding out through 2017. And then it had a final push, which got it to that $1,400 ETH, as we can see down here, that little bit of a move for about two and a half months, but it still didn't beat its Bitcoin value. So it didn't make it close to that 15% of its Bitcoin value. And it's taken about three and a half years of consolidating until we may get another chance to break out of these highs of 10 or 12% as you can see on the side, and then start to make its way back to its previous all-time high, which was set in June of 2017. So this is going to be very rare on cryptocurrencies that they make it back to their all-time highs, especially of cryptos from the previous cycle. And I suspect that's going to happen moving forward as well. So some of the examples, we have IOTA. I'll get to some of the recent stuff as well. I'm going to look at Litecoin, VET, Matic, and things like HOT as well, Holochain. So what we've got here is IOTA. It peaked out September 2017. This is when it was thrown onto the market, June, July, August, September. Then altcoins went on their big run in December, January of 2017, 2018. And then it's bled out ever since. And so if we were holding it through that time, even though our dollar value seems okay, we don't have any Bitcoin value left. It's just bled out. And this was as much as it could fathom during this year's first stage of the 2021 bull market. So from January through to May, it just basically went from about 1,000 Satoshis or 900 up to about 4,000, which is still massive gains. But if we're holding them in the hope that we're going to see the price come back, then we just lost out on Bitcoin and we would have been better off selling all of our alts, throwing it into Bitcoin and just being done with it. So much easier. Check out Litecoin. Same deal. June, July 2013, eight years downtrend. You can swing these, tr uh, swing trade these. You've got to be in and out within a few months and make some more Bitcoin. But the long-term trend and the only trend that Litecoin has ever seen is a downtrend. That doesn't mean it can't go up from here. And like with all of these, it doesn't mean they can't just all of a sudden take off and blow Bitcoin away. But I think the, the odds are heavily stacked against us for any of these altcoins to do that. They might get some moves up here, come back and test some of these levels and continue down. I'm not in it for a little rise from this level to this level. I want to. I would trade those, but I wouldn't be holding these things long term. So that's Litecoin, Holochain. So hot. This was very hot early this year with massive gains. This is against Ethereum value because it was on the Ethereum network. Now it did reach the old all-time high, like dead on the old all-time high, 1488 and 1490, dead on double top. Now we're seeing it bleed away and lose a lot of Ethereum value. You can see it's lost over 80% of its Ethereum value. So if you'd thrown in one ETH at the top when everyone was talking about Holochain, it was in all the comments everywhere, everyone going absolutely nuts. You now have 0.2 of an ETH left from one ETH. And we know what's happened to ETH in that period as well. It's basically gone up, stayed stable. So you've got more in the bag uh, for ETH rather than investing into these altcoins as they blow up. XRP. Same deal in 2017, blew up huge gains on Bitcoin value, huge dump, tried to come back in that second altcoin, that second massive altcoin season, and then it's died ever since. But we can always trade these. This is at low levels now, and this might be a reasonable trade up to some six, seven, who knows, thousand Satoshis, but at least it's at the lower levels and it could be an okay trade. These are the levels that we definitely don't want to be buying altcoins in. Let's have a look at VET because this is a newish one. You can start to see the pattern here. It was 2018, faded. It's had big gains on Bitcoin value. Now, these highs came in in April, and should we see a bleed out again, but the US dollar value remain and maybe increase, then that's going to be a good thing for people who are just looking at fiat. And I suspect many retail are going to get caught into it. And this is like the number one, one of the biggest reasons anyway, that people lose a lot of money when it comes to cryptocurrency trading and they expose themselves to a hell of a lot of risk with these altcoins. And so I'm, it almost might sound like I'm a maxi here, but I'm just looking at the data on these charts and they're not telling me that these are great investments long term. I do have Ethereum, so you can't call someone a maxi when they have Ethereum, especially uh, when it's such a competing 
thought process between a Bitcoin maxi and an ETH maxi. I'm just looking at where I'm going to get my returns with the least amount of risk. So we can see that through the dollar charts and then obviously buying Ethereum at the lows and then writing this out because I have a belief that I think Ethereum is going to get above these levels. And that's why I'm still holding ETH. Stuff like Cardano as well is looking like it might overtake those old BTC values, which is really strong for the project itself. Let's have a look at Matic. What does this start to look like? XRP, big spike, huge interest. I suspect we may see something like that, but I'm still waiting. I'm, I'm waiting. There's no sign for me at the moment to be jumping in for Matic because I think this thing is going to absolutely blow up again yet. It could fade all the way down to these lower levels and then take off again and do something like XRP. You know, that's still a very, very solid gain on my Bitcoin value of 1500%. Imagine buying one Bitcoin's worth at the low and now you have 15 Bitcoin at the top. Just make sure you got to sell out of those. So Matic, maybe it looks like that. Maybe it only has a couple of months sideways and then shoots up again. But that's a lot of Bitcoin value that it has to take from Bitcoin. So there's a lot of dominance that it has to take from Bitcoin to do that. I'm not saying it can't, it's just it's, it begins to stack the odds against us. The last one I'm going to look at is Monero. Monero is at some lows. This hasn't been running very hard all year at all. It's only had a little move from about 0.4 of a percent, 0.3 and a half of a percent up to about eight. So it's not massive moves, but it's at lows. And so it's safer to buy at lows than it is to buy at tops, like we see on Matic and potentially on uh, VeChain, VET, which is at tops now it's come back a little ways. So this is the biggest thing that I've been trying to explain on the channel for some time and hopefully that has given you an idea of how to measure your altcoins against their USD value and their Bitcoin value so that you can hopefully not lose too much money and expose yourself to a lot of risk. So let me know in the comments down below. Join me on Instagram and you can ask questions, daily Q&As. Join me on Twitter as well where I'll be posting charts like this on there, especially explaining you know my thoughts around where I'm seeing the market move to. The Investor Accelerator, check that out. There's a link to that in the description down below where you can learn more about investing and trading using GAN analysis, Wyckoff analysis, and the analysis that I'm using on the charts here to understand the difference in my risk on altcoins and Bitcoin. If you haven't already, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, join us on Instagram, Twitter, the Investor Accelerator, I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.